I love you. You complete me. Let us know where you've seen it in the comments down below. But for now, let's get on with the show. Hi guys, welcome to Ask the Camera Guy. My name is Steven, the camera guy. And if you're going to get married soon, you're the bride or groom, check out for this wedding advice that I'm going to bring to you. <laughs> if you're going to be married soon, be a bride or... Hi guys, welcome to Ask the Camera Guy. I am Steven, the camera guy. And if you're going to get married soon, you're going to be a bride or groom, we have some wedding advice for you. Also, um, if you hear a little bit of lawn mowing sounds, we kind of, you know, mowing the garden today. So, yeah, just ignore that. The first thing I want to talk to you guys about is time and location. Now, usually when you're planning your wedding, a lot of things go into, you know, what time are you going to actually have this wedding at? Now, when it comes to photography, there's some specific times of day that work better than others. For example, if you're going to have a morning wedding, um, just expect that by the time you get to around maybe 10 o'clock, that it's going to be really, really hot. The sun is going to be like beaming if the sun is out and that's not usually the best time to take pictures for one you get very very uncomfortable and for two after a while you get to a point where you start getting these raccoons under your eyes which is when the sun is right overhead and the shadows from your eyebrows actually fall well right over your eyes and it, it doesn't it doesn't look good it's very difficult for the photographer to get rid of and it usually means that we have to either add more light or try to navigate around like open shaded areas. I've seen a lot of wives and brides and grooms get really, really, really stressed out because it's so hot and it's so difficult for them to take a lot of pictures out, all the pictures that they had intended to take. Second tip, hire a wedding planner. Like a lot of the times like people try to handle things on their own, they try to think they're gonna save money and, and all of that. But a wedding planner could really point you in the right direction. They've done it before, they've seen some of the pitfalls of a wedding. The last thing you want is for you to be designing a wedding and realize that you run into a situation on the day of the wedding or somebody wasn't called or something wasn't done that needed to be done or you didn't organize a bartender. And the last thing you want to do is on your wedding is to be stressed because it comes out in the pictures. There's nothing worse than when like you go to a, a wedding and you're taking pictures at a formal session and the bride is like, super worried and super stressed and she's not smiling because she's thinking about all the things that she needs to do for the reception. Like, just alleviate the stress, hire a wedding planner. The third tip, hire a photographer with work that you actually like. Like, actually look at their portfolio, see what they are about, go to their website, you know, just check them out because there's nothing more stressful than when the wedding is over and everything is done that you go back to the pictures and you don't like them. Hire a photographer that you trust and hire a photographer that you actually like. Fourth tip, if you look for wedding photography in Pinterest, you could find wedding styles that you particularly like or certain angles that you like or certain things that make you feel good or this is what you want for your own wedding. And you share that with your photographer. It does a lot of things. For one, for us photographers, it shows us what you're thinking. And it's difficult for you to explain what you're thinking most of the times, but for us, we are very visual people. So seeing what you like could actually have us like, you know, hey, you know, let's, let's drop this down. You know, I could put this on the shot list. I could make an adjustment. So again, fourth tip, use Pinterest. The fifth tip that I wanna give you guys is about timelines. Now, I'm gonna give you a realistic timeline for a wedding. Usually for a wedding, it takes about an hour and a half to two hours for the bride to get ready. So when you're, doing your plans and your estimations, they like plan for that. Um, usually it only takes two hours because you have everybody there. So if it's gonna take 45 minutes to an hour to get everybody into the same location, and when I say everybody, I mean the bridal party, then just add that, make it three hours. Ceremonies usually take about an hour. Sometimes they could take less depending on if you talk to the, 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 the pastor or whoever is doing the wedding. If you tell them you want a short wedding, then it usually would take 15 minutes, but it's really best to just kind of just overestimate by about 10 to 15 minutes on everything. And then you'll always be ahead of time. And when you're ahead of time, for us photographers, that's really a good thing because it gives us more time to make your dreams come true when it comes to the photography. When it comes to the formal session, especially when it, if you have a big family, if you have like 50 people, just organizing those 50 people to take a picture usually takes about 10 to 15 minutes. I know that sounds like a really wild idea, but usually when it comes to weddings, people are really overjoyed and they're not really looking to do anything. So corralling them into a singular place is extremely, 
it's, it could be difficult. If you want 20 pictures, um, at the end of the day, with just your just you and your groom or your bride and your groom together, if you just want if you want 20 pictures, then guesstimate for about 45 minutes. It should take you about 45 minutes to get to far, about 20 setups. With weddings, most photographers we really move, try to move a lot faster than usual and try to get the shot as well. So get the shot and move as fast as possible. Okay, so now we're going to talk about group shot organization, and this tip has to do with actually creating a list of photos that you want for your formal, your formal session. Formal sessions usually happen after the ceremony, but there have been some unorthodox requests that have formal sessions before the ceremony. Either way you do this, you can get through it much, much quicker if there's a list of photos that you want taken. Usually, and this is the way I do it, but you could do it in, in, any, in any form that you want, we usually start from the biggest group first, and we whittle it down and down and down. The reason we do it like this is so that we can get rid of, not rid of, but we can get people off the set and send them into the cocktail area or send them into the reception area without having them bog down the rest of the shoot. This saves so much time you don't, it saves so much time because in the end, like you could literally, like a photographer could literally have his assistant say, this photo is up next and we get all the relevant parties, you put them there and it's done. And we, if we start with the biggest shot first, then everybody's already there. So it's not like, oh, we're gonna start with the bride's family and then we have to go looking for the groom's family. Everybody's already there, you direct them, you tell, we tell them who to move, who to not move, and, and we go that way. After the wedding is done and you have done the pictures, you have done everything, you have done the list, you've listened to Steven and he said you did this and you did it. Um, the last thing is last. I want to make just a recommendation. So it's not really just a tip, it's a recommendation. Get a photo book printed. Get a photo album printed. And a lot of people say, but we're in a digital age, like why should we do that? I'm telling you there is absolutely nothing like something tangible. There's nothing like having a literal page that you could flip. You know, I mean, we want to say that we're going to move into a digital age, but I think at the end of the day, when it comes to photo albums, they're always going to have a place in your heart. All right? And having somebody do this for you, even if you have pictures, you don't have a photo album, there are photo services like ours that could take the pictures that you have and make a photo album layout and print the photo album for you and ship it. And it's, it's beautiful. At the end of the day, somebody comes over to your house, you could literally hand them this. Um, it's so much more personal than having just the pictures on your phone. So I hope you guys enjoyed these tips. If you did, press the like button. If you want to comment down below and tell us what we should talk about next, then we'd love to hear it. If you have any tips about weddings, we'd love to start the discussion down below. I know there's a lot of photographers out there and people who have done weddings, so they might have tips. And it might be really, really nice to share those tips as well. All right? Um, if you want to subscribe, please press the subscribe button, ring the bell so that you get notifications of our new videos. And we love having you guys here. Remember, peace, no gang signs. Secret Confession Women's Underwear is comfortable for guys.